In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at uh, Line of Best Fit. And uh, the example on this page, we have this uh, ice cream vendor that records the daily high temperature and then the amount of ice cream they sell to the nearest dollar. And so we have in this table a number of days, the highest temperature and the volume of uh, ice cream they're selling in dollars. And I've plotted it over here in a scatter plot. Uh, the sales, of course, is the dependent variable. It depends on the temperature, and you can see there's a fairly positive correlation. It's trending upward. Generally, the hotter the day, the higher the amount that they're selling. And so here's a, so, so first of all, this is kind of what not to do. This is a poor line of best fit. It doesn't follow the general trend. See, they're trending up in about this direction. Uh, so, and, and, the way this line of best fit is drawn, there are several points that are a fair distance away from the line. So that's a really poor line of best fit. Here's a much better one. Uh, it follows the general trend of the data, and one of the rules is you try to draw it through as many, as many points as possible, but also the points that aren't on your line of best fit, you want about half above and half below. And again, the points as close as possible. And so if we count here, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are only kind of on the line because the, the little symbols are fairly big. So there's about six above and one, see that's pretty much on. So one, two, three, four, five, six below. So that's a pretty good line of best fit. And I'm going to demonstrate a few different ways to find equations for the line of best fit, but uh, we're going to do uh, like an old-fashioned algebra way here for this one. And so I'm drawing this rate triangle and so this point right here would be about 14, 310. It's a little bit above 300. And this one's right above 25. So 25 comma 500 would be that point about right there. And so remember that rate or slope is rise over run. So the rise is the difference between these dollar amounts. See, three, this is $310 here, and this is $500. So that would be a, a difference of 190. And this is 14 degrees and 25 degrees. So from 14 degrees to 25 degrees is 11 degrees. And so we divide 190 by 11, we get 17.3. Now remember, this is dollars, this is degrees. So this is actually be $17.3 dollars per degree, which, which actually means that approximately for every degree the temperature goes up, you're selling about $17 worth more of ice cream, approximately. And so here's an equation for this. Now, uh, y here is the ver variable on this axis. I guess I could have used S for sales, uh, but I'm still using Y. And I could have used T for temperature, I suppose, but I'm using X on the horizontal axis. So Y is sales, X is temperature. So I'm modeling this after Y equals MX plus B, if you study straight lines. So that, that's the rate or slope. So Y equals 17.3X plus, and the vertical intercept is about 70. Okay, right here on the vertical axis, so that's why it's plus 70 in the end. And we're going to use this on the next page to um, answer a couple of questions. So in the first one here, it says, if the temperature on a certain day is 26 degrees Celsius, how much ice cream should they expect to sell? So this is the temperature, so we're going to put this in place of X here. So we would go 17.3 times 26 plus 70, which is about 519.8. So they should expect to sell about 520, so this is dollars, 520 dollars worth of ice cream around that. Now that's approximate. Maybe they'll sell 540, maybe they'll sell 490, but that would be a good estimate for what they should expect to sell. And we could read that from the graph. See, 26 degrees is about right here, so if we go up to the graph and over, yeah, it looks, still looks about 520 dollars. In B, it says on a certain day, 700 dollars worth of ice cream was sold. What is a reasonable temperature for that day? So this is actually the Y value. It's the sales. So we would put 700 in place of Y and solve for X. And so when I go to solve for X here, the first thing that I would do is, oh, well, I want to isolate the 17.3 X term. So I want to get rid of the 70. So we'll bring the 70 over and subtract it from the 700, which is 630 equals 17.3x, and then I want to isolate the x now. I got the x term alone, so I want to isolate the x and get rid of the 17.3. So we would divide out the 17.3. So basically, x is 630 divided by 17.3, which is about 36. So if you look on the, on the uh, diagram here, see we had $700. So if we go over $700 and down, yeah, it does look like it's about 36 degrees. So the temperature is around, now around, we can't say it's exactly 36 degrees, maybe it's 33, maybe it's 38, okay, but it's probably not 10 degrees and it's probably not 50.
Okay, 36 is a pretty good estimate for what it should be. Now on, on this page, uh, this is uh, the GeoGebra application, and I'm just demonstrating here uh, another way to get the line of best fit. Um, uh, this is all the uh, temperatures, and this is all the sales ice cream, if you refer back to the uh, table from the first page. Um, and this does, <coughs> excuse me, tell you the uh, line of best fit. Um, on the uh, page, I had 17.3, so this is 17.38, and I had 70 for my Y intercept, they have 69.8, so it's pretty close. And you can tell that this looks pretty much like the graph on the, uh, on the second previous page. So uh, that's another way you can get uh, an equation for line of best fit. I'm also going to show how to do it using a graphing calculator, the, one of the Texas Instruments ones. And we'll do that in the next page here. So here's my graphing calculator. So I want to type this data. So this is um, some data from a soup kitchen. Uh, they're keeping track of, for different groups of people, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25, uh, what the cost to feed them was. Okay, so we're trying to find the equation that would represent or tell you the cost, depending on how many people there are. So we go into stat and edit. And if there's data in your lists already, now I'm going to use list 1 and list 2, so I'm not going to worry about list 3 at all. Go up to the top and press clear and enter. Don't press delete because you actually delete the list. You can put it back, but clear, enter. So my two lists, one and list two, are clear. So I've got, uh, so uh, the number of people is going to go in list one. So I need 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. And then we'll proceed over to the top of list two and start with the 60. So 60. 77, 85, 100, and 112. And let me just make sure that I did that correctly. I did. Okay. So now I have my data inputted into the graph and calculator. So I'm going to go back to stat, and I want to go over to calculate, and I want a linear regression. Okay. Um, they use, instead of mx plus b, do they use ax plus b? So uh, that's that's what I'm looking for here. So enter. Now, uh, it does default to pick the values from list 1 and list 2, but if you have different lists, then you would go second list 1, comma, second list 2. So it actually will tell you. So so there's my, um, uh, that's actually my rate, the slope 2.54, and the y-intercept is the 48.7. So uh, I will bring that back up here again in a minute here, but let me just put up my equation. So, so there's my equation with the uh, rate and the vertical intercept pl plugged in. And so um, what I'm doing now is saying, well, let's say we had a lot more people. We had 100 people. So uh, this equation could be used to find out what the cost would be approximately. So we plug 100 in place of x, which is the number of people, and evaluate this. So... Um, of course, 100 times 2.54 would be 254 that we're adding the 48.72, which is about $302.70. So it, around $300 is what it would cost. Now, you could use, and I'll put this up. There we go. Uh, the, the calculator actually gives you the coefficient of determination and the uh, correlation coefficient. Um, so th that's where these two numbers come from. Uh, the GeoGebra application will do that too. If I go back to the uh, GeoGebra page, just for a moment here. Let's just uh, go back. Here we go. So uh, the uh, there's the R squared value and there's the R value for the uh, ice cream sale one. Okay, so it will do the same thing. Now, if you're if in your graphing calculator you don't get those to come up, it means the diagnostic is turned off. So if I remember how to do this here, I want to go into yeah catalog, and it's called the diagnostic. So it's not actually too far to scroll to find it. Here we go. So um, if the diagnostic was off, you would just go to on and hit that, and then if we redid the uh, command again yeah there there it's up so somebody might have turned it off so 
this process of finding a line of best fit is actually called linear regression. And I've shown you actually three ways to do it here uh, by hand with a graph uh, using the GeoGebra application and uh, also the graphic calculator. So there, there's several ways you can uh, accomplish that. Now, a little bit about uh, correlation before we uh, end this tutorial. Uh, doesn't you should also discuss have a discussion about correlation when you're talking about line of best fit. The uh, correlation value that I was talking about in the previous page, if if uh, the correlation value was zero, that means there's absolutely no linear relationship between the variables. So a change in one does not represent a change in the other at all. So if you have correlations values around zero, even like you know 0 0.1, 0 0.2, negative 0.3 or something like that, it's still not a very good uh, fit for your data. Uh, a perfect correlation is if R is 1 or negative 1. That's 1, it's a perfect positive correlation. Uh, if R is negative 1, it's a perfect negative correlation. And if it was exactly those, then all points lie exactly on the straight line with a positive, positive slope here or negative slope here. Uh, a positive correlation means as one variable changes, um, like increases, the other one increases. If it decreases, the other one decreases. That's a positive correlation. And negative correlation just means as one variable increases, the other decreases. So there's a negative rate between them uh, and, and vice versa too. Now, um, if R is greater than zero, if it's a positive value, again, the max is one, uh, there is some a positive correlation. And depending upon how close you are to one, the better the fit. If R is below zero, there's a negative correlation similar to this one. It's not necessarily perfect, but uh, you know, if it's negative 0.7, negative 0.8, negative 0.9, or something like that, uh, then that's called a negative correlation. This graphic shows you a range of values. Uh, so a one, okay, nice straight line. 0.8, it's still pretty, you know, it's still pretty positive correlation and close to the line. 0.4, it's more scattered. Zero, there's no relation. And then this is, uh, now this looks the same as this one, except it's sloping the opposite direction. And the negative 0.8 is similar to the 0 0.8, except it's sloping negatively. And that's what a negative one would look like. Every point's on the line, perfect fit. And that's the end of the tutorial.